Hey everyone, welcome to Casual Watch Talk Sunday Social. Well, we've got a very special episode today. Uh, we're joined by Mike Prance from Christopher Ward. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Pleasure. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, absolutely. And we've got Dave from Scottish Watches. And we've Dave? got Todd from TikTok Talk. Hey everybody. Well, what a uh, what a crazy uh, week uh, Christopher Ward has had. But Mike, I think I think you owe uh, you owe another watch company an apology because a uh, a small, a small independent watch company released a, a titanium watch this week, and you totally overshadowed it. <laughs> Poor Rolex. Uh, that, what you yeah, doing? No. <laughs> yeah. I I apologise, and uh, but you know if they keep working at it, they'll uh, they'll get there eventually. I'm sure. I know Th- their marketing really needs to be brushed up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so so Mike, this this must have been like the cr- one of the craziest weeks for you. Uh, it, it's uh, it's been a, it's been a busy week, yeah, um, yeah, and uh, and um, pretty unexpected in terms of the response. We 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 sort of knew we had a a good uh, a good watch on our hands. I mean, um, we um, we'd shown it to a number of members of um, of the Glitterati press, etc., and they'd uh, they uh, all said nice things about it. Um, we took it to wind up, as you know, Sam, and. Um, yeah, uh, I think you know you're you're probably onto a winner when some of your um, some of your peer group, uh, the CEOs of other brands, um, are wanting to buy one. Um, so that was um, that was an indication that we had probably something a bit special. And then I think on your show I relayed the story of um, one of our um, one of our customers, one of our fans had come across from Chicago to New York. And uh, he was literally rendered speechless when he saw the watch, and then a tear started coming down his cheekbone, and um, that was a that was a fairly emotional moment. And mm-hmm. tried to work out what what um, what that was about, uh, really. Um, and I think it was just because he maybe um, never expected he would have the means to buy um, such a watch, and I think it was a pretty emotional moment for him and then we released the watch and uh, all hell broke loose um and um as you know by now we uh, we brought forward i mean we'd planned we already had in the pipeline the um the green version um and we were expecting maybe we'd be launching that february february or march um so um based on a seven and a half hour sellout of the blue version we decided um the following morning to um that the we would uh on the friday launch the green and um same 300 piece limited edition and that sold out in um well exactly two hours and 13 minutes i was particularly disappointed because we um we had a sweepstake um the team and i about uh, there were 15 of us in my in in the boardroom um going through how we would get this launch sorted out so quickly and uh, we, I said, look, you know, um, sweepstake, ten pound in. How long will it take to sell out? So I think the first one up was forty-eight hours, and I, I, I said I'll go last. Um, and uh, I, uh, I went for ninety minutes. Um, so I was very disappointed because um, Will Brackfield, uh, one of the designers of the watch, uh, he went for two hours, so he uh, he won the uh, one hundred and forty pound. <laughs> Um, uh, I was. It, it didn't end on a high for me the week as a result of that, really. Yeah, yeah. I know. Um, we've got the. It, I've got a shout out to John and uh, Palm at T and Tickers. They actually got hands on it on Wednesday. I think they got hands on the blue one. Um, I, I know one of the questions that uh, that's come up. Somebody's mentioned it in the comments as well. Was the how fast the the green got released after the blue? Was that it, it, you? You. You're, it sounds like your hand was kind of forced a little bit because you'd sold out of the blue so quickly. Uh, well, we had a waiting list of two, over 2,000 people. Oh, wow. Um, and so, um, uh, you know, it just, it just seemed crazy to, um, to, to wait until the original plan, which was February, March, to, to release it. And I know some people um, have criticised us for that, but... Um, I think more than uh, more than a few have been, especially the 300 who've managed to secure a green, um, are I seem seem very pleased about it. So I'm 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 pleased for them. 
Yeah, I think I think it's a I think it's a difficult position you were in in regards to you know you probably expected it to be popular, but maybe not quite as intensely popular as it was. But I think what people forget is, you know, ultimately you are a commercial organisation and it would be remiss of any commercial organisation to not take advantage, especially if there's demand there. And it's not as if you dumped a product that was already in a product cycle onto the market. It wasn't done nefariously. This was going to happen. It just so happened it happened a bit earlier. And I think that for me, certainly, I don't think that's upsetting. It's 300 limited of that colour and a 300 of another colour. That's, I think, more than fair. Yeah, I think that's that's fair, Dave. And uh, as I say, you know, there are, we've still got even more than a couple of thousand now and are waiting this for a further example, but we're not going to... Um, a, we can only produce around about 25 a week. It's quite a difficult watch to, um, to build. Um, and so we're not in the, the game of having people wait a year, two years for a watch. Uh, now we're, we're, yeah. we're, you know... I mean, I guess one up, of the. Sorry, I'm ahead, Dave. Well, I was going to say the 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 future iterations. Obviously, with the popularity of this, you must be thinking, okay, we're going to do a a red, a, a something other color. Will there be larger uh, launches? Maybe a five hundred piece one or a thousand piece one to satisfy. Um, the honest answer to that, Todd, is that uh, um, we haven't fully decided um my instinct is that we will keep it in relatively short runs uh, and it won't i mean we may introduce a, a further color or maybe more um than one further color of this particular design of the bel canto but i think the the bel canto itself um may take other forms going forward as well so which we've already you know been looking at for the past period of time so um you never know, do you, until you launch something, how, how popular it's going to be. And um, for whatever reason, this has, this has if you'll forgive the, the pun, you know, chimed with, uh, with, with a, lot of, a lot of people. And, um, you know, uh, we, could, we could clearly sell thousands, but A, production is, is, um, is, is always going to be an issue, probably. Um, um, but also, I think there's, uh, I want to keep it quite special as well. I don't, I, I don't see it at this stage being something that we just churn out. And I, I think we just want to, um, uh, and partly that's a commercial reason as well. I mean, you know, it's, it's, there's something about rarity. There's something about hunger. Um, it's the queue outside the, um, the, new, um, the new nightclub. Um, it's, you know, with no one, no one on the dance floor sort of thing. It's, 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 you know, we just don't want to overdo it and over egg it. And, uh, um, but yeah, there will be, there will be more down the, down the way. That's for sure. We've got a question. Um, will there be more blue and green released after the current order shipped or is are those, are those colors are kind of off the slate yeah, now? That, no, they, they were limited edition uh, colors, 300 pieces of each and that's it. You know, when they're gone, they're gone, as it were, and they've gone. <laughs> and so um, we'll be moving on to pastures new, pastures new. Yeah, yeah, it was, um, I think it was somebody also mentioned that you've been getting, oh yeah, it was it was Patrick at uh, Pocket Watch Time. He says you've been getting some, it's, not only has it been received well by the public, but it's also been received well by a lot of the watch publications. Said you've got a great write-up in Watch Finder, w Worn and Wound, Watch Chris, who's a big friend of the channel, um, he managed to get his hands on one. So that must have been quite real. Because I think when we spoke um, on the podcast, it was the launch day, wasn't it? And there was a lot, yeah. there was a lot involved in creating the watch and a lot of, a lot of um, sort of risk that, that could have been involved in it. But um, um, what's life without a bit of risk? There's always a risk when you, uh, when you do something different and yeah. new. I mean, that's, that's everybody's face with that. Um, and sometimes you get it wrong and we've got it wrong in the past and sometimes you get it right. Uh, this is, I think, um, these sorts of events and I've, 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 you know, over the course of my career, I've had a, I've been fortunate enough to be involved in a number of such events as this, not in watches um, necessarily uh, and certainly not in watches, but um, where, so, I don't know, the, the something, something aligns and something just takes off crazy. Um, and uh, 
it's a very, you know, these are special moments. And I think, I think it is, I, I'm really, mostly I'm pleased for the, for the, for the team, you know, the, the whole team, um, the whole team, but in general, but also in particular, the, um, the, the product team who, uh, you know, I, I know how hard they work to, uh, to bring this uh, watch to fruition. And, um, you know, it, 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 I do think that it is a, a real achievement. And even if it hadn't been a success, in the same, you know, the, to the level it has been, it was still a great achievement. I mean, they 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 produced a wonderful watch, and you know, spent you know more than ten thousand hours when we calculated it all out. Um, you know, sometimes arguing with each other, and um, you know, sometimes um, seriously falling out, um, but all in the right, with the right cause in mind. You know, trying to produce something that. Uh, uh, wonderful uh, and accessible all at the same time and that's the thing that I think a lot of people have sort of um, registered that it is there's you know there are better watches out there there are there are you know many better watches out uh, in, in the world there's no doubt about that but it is a very special watch and I don't think anybody has ever produced such a watch at such value and so a number of the commentators that you mention um, have, have, have noted that it's not just perhaps an important watch for us, but in some ways may be an important wake up call and uh, an important watch for the industry in total. And that's quite a, a humbling thing to hear somebody say. Um, but I, the more I think about it, the more I, I think it might be, but then, you know, Kipling was probably about right. Uh, those are, there are two imposters and, um, we need to be careful about um, about either of them, really. So, yeah, absolutely. And and you you uh, lived uh, you you allowed me to accomplish one of my YouTube dreams, which was uh, use a segment of the sound of music into a watch review. So ah, there you go. <laughs> well I saw it. I saw it. It was brilliant. <laughs> Just been oh, waiting dear. to. Uh, we we haven't had a, we haven't had a copyright strike from. Um, yeah, you know, 20th yeah. century fox or whoever yet so <laughs> yeah yeah i don't think julie andrews has appeared in too many um watch podcasts but i may be wrong yeah um, well and i think she's got a good invite. future yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, and, and i don't i mean i don't i hope you're not I, I appreciate your being humble but i think the thing is what you've done with this watch in the manner you have delivered it really is a huge swipe at the watch industry and you may have changed the way people approach design of new products uh, just seeing how you comp like as as i think as watch finder said like typically doing this just a million dollars in r d that you guys were able to cut out of the loop by uh, the new approach that you took to it it's just it's very exciting i mean it's just an awesome thing that you guys have done well it's just the way we've always done it, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, yeah. it I know it may seem new to to a number of people and i, I and and what is it is lovely to have um, to have recognition for the brand and for the the, the the team that put this watch together. It genuinely is, and we you know I don't denigrate it at all. Um, but in some ways, I know that it's overdue, um, and it's not the um, it's not the um, it is it is a wonderful watch. But we've done other wonderful watches as well. I mean, I go back to the genesis of this watch, which is the. Um, you know, the JJ1 Jumping Hour um, watch that we produced uh, more than 10 years ago, I think 11 years ago. Um, you know, that was uh, created by Johannes Janker, who was our master watchmaker at the time, who's, as I'm sure you know, gone on to become technical director at, um, at Solita. Um, and it, he, he was a remarkable chap in, in many ways, um, Johannes. Uh, and he set out, you know, if we were looking at a watch that we were looking to retail at around about, you know, £1,400 or whatever at the time. Um, and uh, the aim was to create the most accurate jumping out the world had ever seen. Um, and somebody will no doubt disprove this, um, but but we've yet to find a more accurate jumping out. And uh, it's, it's um, you know, that, that jumping out, ultimately Frank Stelzer had this sort of, brilliant moment, whether it was in the bathtub, I'm not sure. Um, but, um, you know, where he realized that um, with just the addition of 60, 60 new components, the, the, the jumping hour could be converted into a, into a charming 
um, watch. And um, uh, but the, the genesis of it is all the way back to um, back to Johannes. I mean, I, you know, we have um, JJ Four, which is our our moon phase. Um, you know, it's a perpetual moon phase. Um, you know, there are not many perpetual moon phases around, as you will, you guys will know. And I, I think one of the issues, and I take, I, I'm, I'm probably guilty. Uh, I should, I should um, take the blame for this. I, I, I don't think we've necessarily always communicated some of the um, some of the things that we've done. Um, they kind of go a little bit under the radar um, because we don't, you know, we don't have, um, I don't know, the marketing clout or, or and some people some people in the industry and i think uh, if i have a, a single gripe um a, about the industry some people i think don't want to don't want to listen um i don't know why that is and uh, you know somehow um somehow christopher ward you know isn't kosher um uh, against some of the players that um get more attention uh that's that's um just a, just a little personal thing, and I th but I think one of the real benefits of this watch, I think, um, it, it's it's going to be hard for them not to at least pay some attention. They can criticise. We've never um, feared anybody criticising us. It's it's that's you know you only learn there from from criticism. But but to ignore um, many of the things that we've done in the past, um, I think is isn't isn't necessarily the right way to uh, to approach it and I, I think this one is clearly a little harder for people to ignore and that's i think a, a good thing it's because you've been so tr painfully transparent and one of the th reasons i love the brand it you have showed everybody well this is really what it costs and yet we can make it and make it viable and make it real it, even down to just cost certification you you you, you let it sp spill somewhere like well that's you know that costs us 150 dollars or whatever and it, but if you yeah. go to another watch brand and you say, oh, it's cost certified. Oh, that means it's an extra $4,000 now for that watch. And you have, <laughs> I think you're irritating <laughs> the powers that, that, that may, be. But, well, maybe, maybe they're just better negotiators and we, I don't know, or, or worse <laughs> negotiators. Than we, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But, but everybody, everybody pays the same um, yeah. going to cost. Um, it's just the way it is. <laughs> yeah. we, we've got quite a few questions coming in from the audience but before i do that D david i didn't ask you whether you'd managed to see one in person yet if you managed to i see have one? not seen one in person yet but i hope to see one next week oh. there's one right there oh. you know um i'm assuming you're going to have it at the uh, watch pro uh, we're not uh, we're not attending watch you're not pro. Going? Uh, no um we just um spread too thin um and um we we're not long back from wind up, etc. So we're now. I, I may, I may, uh, I may, um, I may be there myself on Friday night, Dave. So I will, I will, I'll make an effort now. Uh, and uh, are you there on Friday night? I, I will be there. Yes, indeed. Well, I, I, I I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping to be there. And if I am, I will have uh, the bell counter, so you will see it if you haven't seen it before. Then. Perfect. Get a look. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, let's uh, let's go for, to some of these. So. Uh, of, you know, big big fan and Nicholas from Fears is asking, how come the blue was chosen first color when green or even purple are more the colors of 2022? Um, probably two reasons, Nicholas. Um, one, blue is uh, is currently the the best and biggest selling color, certainly in our collection. Um, Green's uh, had a good run, as everybody knows, but um, and purple, I'm sure, will. But I think blue is uh, blue is the new black. Uh, and secondly, I'm an Evertonian. So. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I'm wearing a green Rolex, so I can't come on. But anyway, <laughs> um, uh, any plans for a deployment buckle for the strap? Uh, it would have been killer release along the Bel Canto. Um, no. Is the honest answer to that at the moment? It's uh, not not. We didn't think it was a priority um, for this particular watch. Um, I mean, obviously on the uh, obviously on the uh, the bracelet, um, which is um, you know uh, our, our new version two bracelet, then that exists. Um, but on the uh, on the leather straps, um, not at this moment in time. But that's an interesting idea. I'll have a talk to the chaps about that. Um, 
sorry, Mike. The, the next question was, and we covered this in our little mini review and interview is, uh, and a few people have asked me this, why you went with titanium. Now we covered it in the, it, when, when we discussed it, but it's probably worth mentioning again. And also why there's a solid case back as well. A lot of people have, have asked that question. Yeah, I mean, um, simply titanium, and particularly grade five titanium. This is the first time we've done, uh, we've used grade five titanium because of its density. Um, and because we wanted um, a wearable size. So lots of, um, lots of um, uh, charming watches, audible watches, they tend to be quite big. I think, um, you know, anything from 43 millimeters upwards, some many of 45 millimeters to create the, you know, the resonance and the sound and to improve the sound of it. Um, personally, um, you know, I struggle uh, beyond a 42 millimeter. I think a lot of people do these days as well. And uh, we wanted it to be a wearable watch. The only way you can get the sort of level of sound that we were after um, at a 41 millimeter um, size is, is, is using a, a, um, a titanium case structure and um, for that reason as well the the, the titanium case back uh, rather than an exhibition case back um, helps that cavernous you know you're creating an echo chamber you're creating a, a resonance inside the inside the case so that was that was the the reason for that and I, I saw somebody ask a question about why not gold or steel i don't i don't we don't rule steel out as a possibility uh, in future um in future evocations of, of the bell Canto or, or other other uh, other um, watches of the, of this ilk that we might produce in the future, but um, gold. Um, the problem with gold is it's quite soft, and uh, you know the noise the noise that you get from uh, from a you'd have to have a very large watch for it to hit the sort of decibel count um, that we wanted, and we've got a. About, I think it's 78 decibels at arm's length, um, and it's a very, you know, it's a nice sound. It sort of uh, doesn't get in the way, but you always hear it, and you, your ear definitely gets attuned to it. Um, so it, it worked quite well. But uh, but certainly steel is something we're sort of interested in potentially uh, in the future. Um, but uh, I think the next couple will probably be titanium. Interesting you say that about gold. I mean, the Omega, that's probably why that Omega is, what is it, 17 millimeters thick and uh, 45 across? It's huge. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, As, and if you, also, if you also noticed on the Omega, the gongs have little steel inserts on it as well to help with the sound. Okay. Oh, really? Um, and, and actually, linked with the titanium question, Mike, um, there was, somebody's asking, is there a, um, a reason why there was grade tie two on the bracelet and grade five on the case. Yeah, because grade five is all about getting that resonance and and sound. Um, uh, and you know, grade um, grade two titanium is our standard um, titanium uh, bracelet, which which and those bracelets work across a number of different watches. You know, to to uh, produce a small run of um of titanium grade five bracelets would have put the cost through the roof yeah um and it's not a, it doesn't it doesn't serve the you know the, the purpose that the grade five is serving uh it's per perfectly perfectly fine for a bracelet um and as i say grade five we only selected because we wanted to get that sort of uh, level of um, of sound yeah, absolutely. And we've got two, we've got two more, and then I'll I'll pause see if the panel's got any questions. So, um, well, first one is, will the SH twenty one be part of the Bell Canto in future? Um, one would hope so. Um, it's it's I know, a number of people have said why why didn't you do it in um, in the SH twenty one? There's a there's a number of different reasons. Firstly, um, um, the SH twenty one is a is a is a bigger movement. Um, and um, when you start adding a module on top of it as well, um, it becomes quite uh, quite high. Um, so that was part of the reason. Plus, um, all of the development work from JJ1 um, was on the SW200, um, or it was 
um, 2824 at the time, but uh, now the SW200. I, I think, you know, part of the way in which we are able to um, keep the price at the level it's at uh, is because we're upcycling that sort of development. So, you know, to, uh, people probably don't realize how much um, development time and cost would need to go into reproducing um, the module onto a different movement. It's not. It's not a. It's not a like. Oh, you just take that module and stick it onto. No, you'd have to completely redesign the whole thing, and that's. You know, arguably that would have been. Um, it's, it's a possibility for the future, but it didn't seem appropriate at this point, um, and it would have put a huge amount of additional cost and time uh, and effort into something when we already had. Um, you know, Johannes's brilliant original conception, followed by Frank's sort of um, um, lateral piece of uh, brilliant piece of lateral thinking. So it, it 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 wasn't necessary and wasn't wasn't appropriate at this time. But uh, we don't 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 worry. There'll be plenty of things coming down the pipe uh, with SH twenty one attached to them in twenty three. Yeah, and then uh, then I'll, I'll I'll just do this one last question, and then I'll I'll start stacking them up again, uh, and I'll go to the panel. But probably the same answer for this one, isn't there? Um, any plans for a chronograph chime? Yeah, we yeah we're we're thinking um, seven hundred fifty k would be where we'd pitch it <laughs> um, instead of instead of four fifty with uh, a four hundred. Probably adding a tourbillon, and um, and um, you know I, I don't know. Um, a nice, a nice cream making machine as well, um, potentially. Um, so I think you've really, I think we've really got to expand the, expand the envelope a bit uh, as we go forward. Yeah, yeah. No, it was it? Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a good question, but there's definitely uh, further iterations. I think of the bell counter coming. I sensed oh, well. it was a, t I sensed it was a tongue in cheek question. So. <laughs> 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 well, uh, yeah, I don't know, Dave or, or Todd. Is there any, anything that I've, you, you wanted to go over while I'm while I sort of read through these comments? Go for it, Dave. Hey, two seconds. Are you got the lights back on? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I've got a I've got a, a non Bel Canto related question, if that's okay, because sure. um, yeah, I'm a huge fan of you know Christopher Ward watches wearing them. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Todd. collection. So. The question is because I'm over here in the States and, and I think what's the level at which you think maybe it might be viable to have like a U.S. service center, a U.S. sort of distribution point to sort of DHL is not the most popular here in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, yeah. I hear I hear a lot of guys belly aching complain. I'm just curious if that's even a viable possibility in the future. Um, yes, it most certainly is. I mean, you're right. Um, if I, uh, it's only a, a wind up. Um, I mean, the, most of the people who came to our stand were, uh, were like you were fans of the brand. And the only, the only, the only complaint that we had was, uh, was about DHL. Um, and strangely, <laughs> strangely enough, uh, or not, perhaps not strangely enough. Um, I was having this very conversation with our, um, our operations director last week. Um, now, what I've, you know, what we need to do is is um, is is work it all out from a uh, a cost base and uh, all the rest. Of it. But I I I think at some point, Todd, and I don't, I am not going to promise when that is because I honestly don't know when it when it is. But it is a project that um, the guys will be uh, asked to look into. Um, and um, meanwhile, we are um, you know talking with uh, DHL about their processes and. Um, uh, it's it's so, so variable. Some most most of the um, the sort of transshipment stations are very efficient, but then you find I, whether it's because um, they have quite a high churn at some of these places, and I, it's largely down to individuals not knowing the process that DHL have put in place, and so a few things do um, do get uh, log jammed. Um, but we are. Uh, what I can say is that we know because we track this sort of stuff. Um, it is getting better and better, and we have a as our volume grows. Um, and you know now the U.S. is our biggest market. Um, you know we are able to have proper conversations with DHL at a pretty senior level, and uh, 
they 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 want they don't want and they their senior management definitely don't they want to give a great service uh, and from all the others that we've tried over the years DHL are still the best uh, and they're also the best coming back as well because what one one of the main reasons we have the relationship with DHL that we have and I'm sure true of many others uh, who are shipping not just watches but anything to the states um, the returns process because you know people want sometimes to return their watches whether it's for a service or just because they didn't like the watch it wasn't what they expected there is no doubt that DHL have the best returns process they make it easy the, it's the easiest option for customers if they can you know pick it up have it picked up from their home they can have it picked up at a local uh, center etc so and that makes life easy for our customers but a small percentage do go wrong and I'm conscious of that. And maybe at some point uh, in our future, um, we will have a sort of um, a, U a US space that also provides um, service and repair for uh, Chris Ward watches as well. So I'll update my resume for the US Service Center representative and that'd be great. We'll look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you you actually again. erupted everyone in the comments, uh, definitely <laughs> had an opinion on DHL. <laughs> uh, so we were yeah, definitely... <laughs> Uh, so right. yeah, appreciate everyone for for sharing your your opinion on that. Except for except for Pete from um, uh, Pete McConville from Not So Obvious Watches said that apparently in Australia DHL is quite is a is, is a is a good one. Well, <laughs> I, I, I must say uh, I agree with Pete um, and uh, the other company he mentions. We <laughs> we we would never go. We've had uh, we've had some over the years. We had some bad experiences. So uh, DHL are the best. Uh, whether yeah. that's good enough doesn't matter. Yeah. That that's a, that's a good point. I've dealt with the big four professionally over my life, and DHL in most parts of the world are hands and you know hands and feet above everybody else. Sadly, but there's always one market that just throws the uh, yeah the stones right, in there. Yeah, yeah, always one. You're right. Yeah, yeah, FedEx is actually really good in Florida. We really, well, I've, I've always had good experience with FedEx here, so it probably does change in different. I'm sure the DHL, I'm sure uh, the DHL management is delighted with this uh, <laughs> with this live stream. Uh, Sorry about that, DHL. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, let's hope they're listening in. I, th I think I, th I think Todd, you may never get another watch from us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to buy you know where you live. In the secondary market. <laughs> yeah. so you may you may <laughs> never get anything ever delivered by DHL to your home again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've 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 had a flurry more questions come through, but I'll just I'll just I'll just pass it over to Dave or Todd. Did you have any questions that you wanted to go over before I dive into a few more uh, commenters ones? Yeah, one one I was going to ask you, Mike, was with regards to the Belcanto. Obviously, you know, a lot of your watches are you know they're very strong value propositions, and you know a lot of people I think really do enjoy your brand because, as a rule, it brings things that they get that they would need to typically pay a lot more for for the yeah. same level or quality of product from one of yeah. the bigger guys on the high street. And, yeah. you know, that's what attracts a lot of people. And, you know, every watch I've ever felt, you know, it always, the price point is almost like the bit where you go, really? Surely it's more than that. In the Belcanto, you know, what kind of, it's an unusual, let's be honest, it's an unusual complication. It's one of the ones that's regarded as one of the you know high complications. And yes, in the Bocanto, I guess it's a, a slightly simplified version of what people would expect out of, say, a minute repeater or something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Was it was your kind of ideas behind this to do something different, or was it to try and bring something that people wouldn't expect in at a Christopher Ward price point? Um Really, the former. I mean, it was it was um, one of the beauties of 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 of, of what we do is. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a you know the the whole sort of um, product development uh, approach is is very much a collective thing. Um, you know, lots of brainstorms, lots of conversations, uh, lots of things thrown at the wall. Most of them falling off. Um, some of them sticking. And um, uh, genuinely, you know. <laughs> anybody in the business can can throw an idea in for a watch and they'll be listened to um in this instance the um uh, it, it was i suppose the route was we had created the um you know frank's frank's original sort of um uh 
watch was uh, was um, with this uh, new module uh, was the Bell Aura for Meister Singer. Meister um, Singer, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was going to say yeah. it's very similar so case back as well. Yeah, I mean, the, it was you know that we did we produce I don't know ninety five percent of all Meister Singer's watches, maybe even one hundred percent on occasion, and uh, you know. Um, we had created the Bell Aura for them, um, and it's a, and it's, a, it's a really good watch. Um, you know, uh, at a very decent uh, price, I think. Um, mm. uh, and so, and it, and it, it, it was a, a good seller for uh, for Meister Singers. It, I think it went on sale early 2020, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah, um, just after, just just before lockdown, I think. I th- yeah, I think I think it was. It was just before lockdown, and and it had a really very very positive response. Mm. Um, and um, that that sort of uh, led us to think, well, you know, we've created this module, or Frank, you know, Frank had created this module. Our our business had, um, but the design team in you know really wanted to. Um, they saw an opportunity. Um, and this is particularly Will and particularly um, Adrian and also uh, and also um, York Junior. They 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 realised that, or they wanted to create something that 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 just put the the elements of the the module that make the sound in front of people, as opposed to behind a dial. And then when you start thinking like that, then you're into, you know, the whole symmetry of, of, of how this might look. And there are clearly, um, there are clearly, you know, echoes here of how others have done it, at, you know, MBNF, et cetera, legacy machines, all of it, you know, that was sort of the, the standard that, uh, that, that was being sought um, with, with these, what, with, with the bell cancer. And it was, it just developed from that. Uh, and as, as you'll probably know and you'll certainly be aware that the the process of changing from the original bell aura um module which frankly when you take the um you know you take the dial away it's quite ugly um Mm -hmm. no disrespect to to frankly (laughs) designed it in the first place but it is quite ugly um and so that was ditched as a you know so so then the 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 challenge was well how can we you know turn this ugly duckling into a swan and um, that was the the process that, that 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 took a long, long time because you'll know that you know every time you and it was you know every every single time um, you know t- to improve the aesthetic required something being moved um, or something being hidden. That meant uh, Frank and the engineering team had to go and redo the whole bloody thing. I mean. Excuse my French, you know, it was like, you know, and you know, Frank is a wonderful, wonderful engineer, but he would be the first to admit um, he, he's not, um, you know, he, he's, he, he, aesthetics is not his number one priority. So he had this wonderful sort of tension, which often happens in, in product development, uh, no matter what the product is, you know, between engineering, technical and, and design. And but it was it was fantastic because they're all kind of relatively young. They're all they all seem very young compared to me. But um, you know they're in their early thirties. You know Frank is the is the grandfather of the group. You know at forty, um, and they'd never um, you know approached doing something of this ilk before. And so it was a brilliant journey to watch these four young men um, work out not just how to create a, um, a great watch, but work out how to, you know, together, um, you know, make it happen um, when it wasn't a straightforward and simple process to do that. So it was, it was on many, di- on many levels, it was a fascinating thing to, 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 mm. to bear witness to and be involved with. And, and my, my involvement merely is, is really to, uh, to just occasionally um, break them up and, Send them back to their corners, um, <laughs> and uh, and or and or occasionally put some, um, you know, wind wind under their wings because um, you know there were times when uh, any all projects that are tough, you know, where they, you know, it was deflated and they didn't think they were going to get there necessarily, and there were barriers in the way, and so you know, 
uh, all I can do is, is maybe help remove some of those barriers. So, but the 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 real the real sort of um, achievement here lies with uh, it lies with everybody who brought it to market. I mean, but but the real you know the the core of this achievement is with those four young men, uh, yeah. and I'm very pr- very proud of them. They should be very proud of themselves. Awesome. Mm-hmm. You ready for some quick fire a quick fire round from the the, the audience again? Um, so first question we've got from Boston Watch Collector is I, I'll I'll change this question a little bit because your your collaboration with the British Army and the, the you know the British Armed Forces is 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 vast, isn't it? So I think this is more to do with the U.S. military. So they're asking whether you envision a collaboration with military or special groups in future as it makes watch collectible and adds a distinctive partnership. So I guess this would be of like any U.S. military. Um, yeah, I mean our our, um, our bespoke arm, um, which is um, which is growing rapidly at the moment, um, is in conversation all the time with uh, various uh, uh, military groups uh, all over the world, but especially now um, with uh, with the US because um, you know there's a lot of them, um, and uh, um, you know so yes, I mean anybody who's interested just needs to go onto our website click onto the bespoke area which is now in the top now and speak to the uh, bespoke team who will be delighted to uh, create a uh, an individual watch for any any group um it's a it's a uh, uh, uh you know it's a really sort of fast growing um part of our business and what we do unusually is um uh, we don't um you know it, the, the pricing is pretty much uh, the same as it is for the um for the main line so it's a, it's a it's a really fantastic value and uh it's as i say it's growing very quickly for us absolutely um so d uh, sorry d stifle stifle if i said your name wrong but um mr france could you give us an estimation of how many watches christopher war produce a year also what country is your largest customer base so i think you answered this with the us but yeah can, can you be can you be yeah this, on the this, estimate this financial year, which ends sort of end of March for us, um, you know, I think we'll produce just over 20,000 watches. Um, and um, the U.S. is is um, is our now our largest market and, uh, and our fastest growing market as well. Awesome. Um, so uh, quite a few people have asked. So Collins asked. Um, with the great success of these watches, Mr. France, you're now, you're now into a tourbillon or split time um, up for Christopher Ward. And then somebody also asked whether a minute repeater might be on the cards as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, they're very respectful, aren't they? Calling me Mr. France. I'm, I'm, it's very, um, <laughs> makes, it's me, feel very get, make, yeah. makes me feel very old, um, which I am. Um, so um, uh, we, actually we, we, we were considering doing doing a tourbillon um, back in 2015 or 16, uh, and um, we we know we could do a tourbillon, um, but frankly, um, we don't give a damn. Um, I think that I, I think <laughs> it's gone with the it's, wind. It's, yeah, exactly. Um, I, I think it's overdone. Um, right. I, I think uh, there are too many, um, and actually, you know, and they're, they're not as they're not quite as complicated as people think um, uh, to create. It's much harder for us to create, um, uh, you know, a, a, an SA twenty one chronograph than it would be to create a tourbillon, and it would have much more meaning for far more people than a tourbillon. So, um, no, we're not going to do a tourbillon in the near future. A minute repeaters, etc. I mean. Um, Again, I, I, n- 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 there is nothing, nothing on uh, on the table at the moment um, that says we'll do a minute repeater. But I think um, I'm pretty sure uh, that we that will be a discussion that we'll probably have um, following what's just happened. Um, but um, you know, the, the development uh, these aren't. It's not like shelling peas. This sort of stuff. It's it's very very complex stuff and it takes time and we're not a huge you know we don't have dozens of people um um you know that we can go and send off on special projects to uh you know go and spend a year doing this stuff so so it's it's 
you know, one of the benefits of being small is we um, and independent is what the hell pleases us. Um, one of the disadvantages of being a small independent uh, watchmaker is that uh, you don't have the sort of resource that other people have, so you can't go off on flights of fancy. Maybe that's a good thing as well, and maybe it focuses the mind onto things that matter uh, or that, that, that we have to think very carefully about where we invest our time because mm -hmm. you know, time is our literally our most valuable asset. I know that's a sort of a, a cliche, but, but for a business like us um, who have um, big eyes when it, comes to, uh, when it comes to trying to push boundaries, um, in, in what's possible um, you know you, you, they can't be bigger than our stomach otherwise we, uh, we, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll end up sort of going into some sort of downward spiral so you, we're always going to be looking to push, push the barriers that's, that's it's why you know it's, it's what makes life interesting and, uh, and no doubt we'll make a few mistakes <laughs> along the way as well um, and you will do expect to see some interesting stuff from us I, I promise you that mm. and uh, um, but not all of it's going to have the same sort of um, response as the bel canto has had, even though uh, I, somebody was saying to me the other day, uh, literally, and they, they, it was um, it was a very eminent um, eminent person in in the industry, um, and um, whose opinion I really value. Uh, and in his opinion, um, whilst he thinks the bel canto is fantastic, um, to him. Um, our super compressor was an even greater achievement. Yeah, really. Um, and the case. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, because that that was a you know again a bit like the bell counter where there's nothing you, you know nobody nobody shares stuff about um, how to create a you know a, a sonnery opassage you know a, a charming watch with you uh, you have to go and work it out yourselves. Um, well, you know, with the with the super compressor, as you know, there wasn't one and still isn't another one. I think. Somebody, somebody actually said somebody, a, a small Hong Kong based brand may have introduced one um, quite recently. Um, we haven't seen it, so I can't, I don't know. But as, other than that, um, nobody's done a proper super compressed watch. And, and again, the challenge that that presented the, the, the team um, was, it, it was incredible. You know, to retro uh, engineer uh, reverse engineer that was no small small achievement and, and in, t in total hours and uh, uh, took almost as long as the bell canto to create you know? so it's you know it's it's kind of interesting so uh, but it but it's never going to be as commercially successful probably as um, as the bell canto which has just captured everybody's imagination yeah but it's still a brilliant watch like the, the moon phase the moon glow Oh like yeah. That. Well, it's very interesting. One of the first things I did on Thursday morning was I got we we moved all of the all of our you know sort of um, specialty watches up the product listing pages um, because we assumed that people would be interest more interested now in some of those um, some of our sort of um, our JJ calibers etc. And sure enough, that's what's happened. Um, you know the 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 moon glow watch has just gone through the roof. Um, so, um, you know, I th I'm hoping that people will, will, will look again and see some of the, um, some of the really, uh, the really superb um, calibers that we, we have that we've developed under our own steam. Yeah, absolutely. That one's on my wish list for sure. Yeah. The, the moon glow, Todd, yeah? Yeah, the moon glow. I uh, found that one to be just a gorgeous watch. I, 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 well, I agree with you. Not, I really do agree with you. I think it's, um, it's, it's one or two others have made the moon the the hero of uh, most moon phases. It's it's like the, the you know the tiny little moon at uh, six yeah. o'clock that that you know that that moves in a jerk uh, um, every so often. Whereas we wanted to make the moon glow the the, the moon the hero of uh, of of the moon phase movement, and. Uh, you know the fact that it tracks the moon um, in a perpetual way uh, is 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 something I think. Again, I don't think we marketed it in the way that we could have done, and we're probably going to relaunch some of these uh, calibers because I think maybe um, with what's happened with the Bel Canto, as I say, I think people will maybe look again. 
and and look at Chris Ford in a slightly different light um, and understand just how superb some of these um, these calibers are. And this is the moon phase is just I think it's a hundred and it's accurate to 128 years as long as you fully wind it. And as I've wow. said on many occasions, if if uh, be, you know if on the 127th year it's it's um, it does go go out of sync, I will definitely give a refund. <laughs> but I know I know Dave's gonna be very disappointed he can't get a turbine with a cutout on the dial. I mean that's a big thing for him. He's been waiting for that. <laughs> no, I think I think not. <laughs> you you think very correctly, Mike. <laughs> I, think, I think I think I think you're absolutely right. You know, like that that you know, I'm thinking in regards to you know that moon phase, which you know wasn't to me getting the attention it should have. And when I think about it, you know. What is there out there that's similar? You've got Hermes, and you've got um, you've got Arnold and Son, and, uh, and they're Son, both yeah, yeah. they're both not too grand. Let's put it like that. No, they're a bit more expensive. Um, yeah, and so, too grand so, to make so, me a ten percent deposit. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, so yeah, I, I, so you know, as I say, I think I think hopefully it'll have um, you know yeah, it'll bring attention so. to some of these. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So we've got a, a couple more questions. So, so Pete, Pete from uh, Not So Obvious Watches is is asking. I, I think you answered this at the start, but a few people have asked. I think they've been joining us. We've been going through. So, just is the Belcanto scalable to a mainline watch, or is it? Will it always be a limited edition? Do you think? Uh, as I said, um, Sam, I, I, it may change. I mean, you know, uh, you know, things change. You, 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 know, you might wake up tomorrow morning and think, ah, let's. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> let's let's make it huge um that's not the way we're thinking at the moment uh and as i said we know at the moment the production is limited to around about 25 um and because we're using uh we could certainly get an assembly up beyond that that's not the issue the issue is much more um upstream and you know literally um and i don't think they will be upset if i say this but you know um Cronode, for instance, who um, who are um, who've produced the the, the gong, uh, the hammer, and the bridges um, above the platine uh, this time, um, and also are uh, hand polishing all of these all of the facets that are on it. And you know, and Cronode are a, a magnificent company and have a real skill and ability at this. One of the things that we were determined to, one of the facets on one of the bridges is really, really difficult to polish to the standard that we insist upon. And I think some, honestly, I think sometimes we, they must think we're completely bonkers because we, we, are, we ask for things that many other brands just don't ask for. Um, but um, I do know, for instance, that they only have at the moment one person in their business who's capable of polishing that particular facet mm -hmm. to the standard that we want so there's a, there's a little you know there's a sort of a um a limit to some of the numbers now um if they go and train up or pull in another two or three people um then maybe we could get to 50 75 100 a week i don't know um so we'll see um but at the moment i think the the aim is not to not to do that um but if we continue to have thousands of thousands and literally have thousands of people on a waiting list, then unlike some other brands, you know, I, I just feel we were kind of obliged as well to try and um, try and fulfill that demand. Uh, it's commercially, um, you know, attractive for us to do that, albeit actually in the long term, and we do try and think in the long term, um, you know, it isn't always, uh, chasing the dragon isn't always the best thing for a brand in the long term. So these they, these are things that are like with this conversation, you know, emerge over time and are 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 are, are discussion points, and um, we'll go round and round and uh, talk it through and hopefully make the right decisions at the right time on these sorts of things. And but when you're confronted with such a and I've been here on a, I say on a number of occasions in previous lives, it's always an interesting sort of um, you know decision process and uh, people think it's a simple straightforward thing to it. it isn't there are lots of considerations that need to be thought through um, and we try and be thoughtful um, 
and and hopefully, as I say, we we will we'll make the right decisions. Yeah, actually, somebody's asked a, asked a good question here. So they say, what advice would you give to someone who's starting out in business, not necessarily just in the watch business, but generally, what's the big lesson? <laughs> That's just to, to get you hit you with a really heavy question there. Um, yeah. uh, the, I, I've been asked it a few times, no doubt, like yourselves. Um, uh, my, my simple advice is um, uh, make sure you've got enough cash. Um, um, you know, so many great businesses uh, fail, not because they make a profit, but because they run out of cash. And, um, sure. you know, if you're not well financed in however way that is, whether you personally have, uh, have a lot of money or you've got people who are prepared to support you, whatever you think you're going to need, you know, treble it, quadruple it, because it will never be, your first thought is never going to be enough. Um, so people always get surprised about, and in the watch industry, believe me, you know, this is even more so, you know, this is not, uh, not building a, a piece of software. This is, uh, it's the capital investment in, in, in setting up watches can be quite uh, significant. So, so my only ad advice is, um, assuming they've got a good idea, no matter how good their idea is, if they haven't got enough cash, it will never, ever, ever come to fruition. In the Abs way they would like absolutely. To. As I'm often told, if you want to make a million pounds, start with two million. <laughs> Not on. <laughs> I have a question just because I'm a design and an art nerd. And I just want to know the songbird. Was that an afterthought or was that a conscious thought from the beginning in the design? Honestly, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it was it, <laughs> it was it was during one of the uh, one of the design meetings about halfway through the process when the guys had been moving bridges around and with the hammer um in the final position it finally was it was going to be in and um i can't remember who it was i think it might have been me I, I literally can't remember who it was but um somebody said that looks like the tail of a bird the hammer yeah so, you mean this um, bit in the center here, Mike? Yeah. Just for, just yeah, well, with, yeah, yeah. yeah yes, you're exactly right. Yeah. So from the hammer all the way through to the red um, on-off indicator, which became the beak. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, depending on how your brain works, um, you see that as a. Uh, uh, you know, I we all we all then started seeing it as a um, as a bird. Uh, I can't unsee the, it now. <laughs> no, I know, I know, and 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 uh, the red beak. Was a um, was a bit of whimsy, really, uh, um, um, you know, because you can go on. Uh, it amused us, um, and so after that, so it wasn't it wasn't an original intention, but okay. about halfway through the design process, we spotted that it looked like a bird, and therefore, inevitably, it became the songbird, and so it fits the um, it fits the story very well. <laughs> Perfectly. Yeah, I, as soon as I saw it and when I heard it, I was like, "Wow, that is just brilliant." So I was just curious how that yeah, process yeah. happened. No, sad, sadly, I wish I wish I wish uh, I wish I could claim that it was genius, <laughs> genius from the outset. But no, it wasn't. But but, but it was uh, it was it was a. Uh, and then we had a we had a really great debate in the uh, in a number of design meetings about whether we should make it obvious or not, or whether and whether 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 indeed it, we should even mention it. But I, I just think it's for me it's a beautiful whimsy, as I say, and very much. Uh, very much in tune with what we're about for sure yeah. Yeah. I've, I've got a very important question so one of my longest term subscribers i think perhaps even when i was was less than 10 subs starting out uh, anon anonymous anon umas uh, he asks this on most of my the most of the collaborations we do so he wants us to put this to rest he's saying put the conspiracy theories to rest is mike your dad <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to say no, but Todd, you, you, you had an interesting, we had an interesting conversation before this, oh. didn't we? Well, it's, my, <laughs> my wife, my wife desperately wants to believe that we're related to you because her maiden name is France. And then, so is she that did, right? She, she did some research and her family comes from Ireland. And so <laughs> she's like, I'm wow. pretty sure we're related. <laughs> we're almost certainly, almost certainly. He says almost certainly, honey. So... <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> yeah, that's been that's been awesome. I'll just see if we've just got any last um, questions. W- while I'm looking, uh, Dave or Todd, did you have anything you, you perhaps not asked yet? You anything you wanted to go over? Um, no, I think we've covered most things. Thanks, thanks as always yeah, for being so kind of open and honest. You know, like uh, one of the few in the watch industry that likes to um, open the doors rather than shut them. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, and you know, with with guys like you, you'll sniff out um, sniff out uh, the bullshit very quickly. Um, anyway, so um, why not uh, be straightforward? It's uh, I, I was talking to somebody the other day about um, you know what we're trying to do. I don't think we're there yet, but um, uh, is uh, is take the fourth wall away with Christopher Ward um, and. Uh, I'd, I'd love people to get even more access to what we're about. And uh, there's something that's exercising my brain at the moment is how, how we take that fourth wall away even more than we, we, we have done. Because uh, I, I have learned that the watch industry that I wasn't a, a part of until I started Christopher Ward, I have learned that it gets more fascinating the more you know about it, um, not, not the, the, the less you know about it. Absolutely. The things that they typically hide are the things that actually are interesting. And, you know, yeah. they're, they're, they're not giving away the uh, the secret sauce recipe when they open up. They just, um, it's just, I think it, it's the way of the Swiss predominantly. Yeah, don't don't tell you all that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, I mean, but yeah, um, never quite understood it. There's a, there's a, and still in this industry, I think there's a terrible snobbery afoot. Um, you know, Horribly that, so. um, you know that uh, it's probably little less than it uh, than it was twenty years ago, um, but it's still incredible. I think I think the uh, and that's why I, I love you know these sorts of conversations gen- genuinely because um, you know you, nobody's going to blow smoke up your um, your bottoms, are they? So. Well, and it's that, and I think like like a lot of guys in the stream, like why we're such rabid fans of the brand because I feel like I'm rooting for a friend. I feel like I'm hoping that you you guys well, have yeah. a run every time. Well, I think you're actually rooting for a relative from. Fair enough. We're family. We're, we're, look, Todd, we're practically family, so I mean, you know. practically family. <laughs> I lost a father and you gained a cousin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and my, yeah. I mean, my son, Sam, my long lost son, you know, I mean, That's uh, right. it's like, you know, the, he's the prodigal. He's the prodigal. I mean, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, this, yeah. Mike, thank you so much for this. Um, thank you, everyone, for all of the comments in the comment section. Sorry we couldn't get to them all. I tried to group a few together and appreciate that there was there was there was question after question after question so thank you everyone for joining and um, thanks to my panel mike thank you so much for joining us pleasure really really enjoyed it thank you yeah absolutely so i'll just end the live stream thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you next time on casual watch talk live thanks everyone <laughs>